Okay, this is a lecture on cleavage, foliation, and lineation for structural geology. So what we're talking about now is the rock fabric, and that is the total sum of grain shape, grain size, and grain configuration in a rock. And so the fabric can have different uh, characteristics. One type of fabric is called foliation, which is planar, and something we see that's common is cleavage. And then lineation would be a linear fabric. So when we talk about cleavage, we're talking about not ta not talking about mineral cleavage, which is let's say how you can tell that a calcite is a calcite or a feldspar with this rectangular cleavage is, but more rock cleavage, which is a sort of a larger scale feature, and it broadly refers to spaced aligned planar to curvy planar surfaces that tend to be associated with folds and oriented parallel to or fan shape relative to the axial surfaces of the folds commonly penetrative and form without apparent loss of cohesion. So penetrative means that they go throughout the rock and without apparent loss of cohesion means that they're, the rock is kind of still continuous across them, although when you hit it with a rock, it would break or cleave, hence the name. So here's an example where we see the color variation shows the bedding in this fold, which is defined by the uh, different materials. But then uh, cutting across that are these lines, these curvy planar features, which is the rock cleavage that has developed during the metamorphism. And so in, what's interesting is the relationship uh, between cleavage and folding. The cleavage fold forms basically perpendicular to the maximum shortening direction. And so what we see is that often then we'll cut across the fold in a, in a predictable way. So it cuts across basically um, a, right along the, the axial plane. So it's could be called axial planar cleavage. But as we go down the limbs, then we have this angular relationship between the limb and its layering and the cleavage. And same thing on the other side. So, uh, and that was clear in this picture here where we're going across the middle sort of hinge of the fold and the cleavage is basically perpendicular to the layering, but as we go onto the limbs, it becomes more uh, at a lower angle between the two. So here then is an example that we might see in the field where there's some layering and we just see a little bit of bedding and then this cleavage. We could, if it's, we could establish that it was this axial planar cleavage, it would tell us that the fold probably looks like what's shown here in C rather than the middle case. And then in a map view, this is what we might see where the fold is plunging to the upper right. So it's going down in that direction. And then the bedding is shown with the typical bedding symbology. But the bracket strike and dips show this the orientation of the cleavage. And you can see it's pretty much uniform and all dipping fairly steeply to the southeast. So it cuts ac across these folds. In, a, in that same kind of way. Here's an example of a fold, very tight, probably developed in some quartzite or, or a kind of a silica rich marble. But then you can see on either side of it is this cleavage that's developed in the, uh, let's say, more shaley material. And um, you can also get a good sense that the cleavage is basically uh, Parallel to, parallel to the axial planes. Here's another example of larger scale, where you can see the fold, the bedding indicated by the colors, and then these lines show the axial or the uh, cleavage. And so, which way do you think the fold goes? The answer would be that it would probably curve down around like this, because as we go up this limb, we would expect to hit a hinge the cleavage would be perpendicular to it and come back around the other side. Here's another one. We measured this one in some of our uh, extension calculations, but you can see now the very nice kind of cleavage or foliation developed in this more uh, phyllitic material between thick quartzite layers. The other you can see is that the cleavage formed, but then it got deformed as deformation continued. So we see it sort of squished in 
the inner part of this fold and it fans out away from there. Here's another view of some cleavage cutting across this rock and which has been folded pretty severely, but we see that really through going planar fabric. So a, a term we can say also like cleavage is the form of foliation, which is this mesoscopically penetrative parallel alignment of planar fabric elements in a rock, usually a metamorphic rock. And you can also have primary foliation, which would be the igneous or sedimentary layering. But what this means, mesoscopic means not microscopic, sort of more hand sample to outcrop scale, but not macroscopic, not uh, sort of kilometer scale necessarily. Penetrative means it goes through the rock everywhere. Parallel is clear, and then planar is the key word. So foliation, think of foliage or leaves. That's the root of the word, planar. So here's primary foliation in this. Uh, volcanic rock, igneous rock, uh, but that's, you know, as you remember from the beginning of our class, that's a primary structure. We really study the secondary structures, so we might look at the deformation of this primary foliation. So here's some uh, uh, primary foliation. So these planar structures we see in gneisses and schists, um, and also, and it's really defined by the compositional layering that develops in heavy metamorphism. We also can see this uh, up here in the upper left here, very nice myelinite, something like we might see in the top of the South Mountain. And then here's a, a little zone of foliation that then was folded and maybe melted. So in contrast, a, a lineation is a subparallel to parallel alignment of elongate linear fabric elements in a rock body commonly penetrative at the outcrop end or hand sample scales of observation. Can be primary also. One kind of lineation we see is silicon lines. It's just a linear feature. But a lot of times in a rock, we'll see these lines. And so this shows uh, these cool kind of little block diagrams, these cartoons. And what you can see on the right is you see these uh, little things that look like little tic tacs are just crystals in this rock that would be aligned vertically like a stack of pencils. So those are aligned in a linear fabric element or lineation. There's a little bit of a foliation that's maybe indicated by these darker uh, zones, but really the, the, the foliation is not really as clear as it is over here where we see you could sort of fit a plane through those little tic tacs. So, uh, on the left, it's foliation defined by the feldspars, which are the little tic tacs. They're not any preferred orientation on the foliation plane, but on these other planes, perpendicular to the foliation plane, we see this ar arrangement. And then on the right is the lineation, but no foliation, although I think you might see a little hint of it developing. So here's uh, lineation. Here's um, this rod. It's uh, basically a uh, heavily deformed rock, it was sort of stretched so much that we get these elongate features. Could have been an old, like this was a conglomerate and it would be a stretched pebble conglomerate. And here's a linear feature that is a rock that this uh, person is um, enjoying that just came out of the, the, the outcrop. Here's other lineations are things like mullions, like we saw in uh, Barnard Canyon. And so these develop at that interface between soft and stiff material uh, where we get this preferential sort of stretching and injection of uh, this, this soft material into the stiff material. But basically, it makes linear features or lineations. And so uh, they can be, the word comes from this architectural mullions that are on a church, but also we see them as an idea in uh, geology. Another thing that can happen is if we stretch something in, a, in some ways where it can kind of flow and thin, we have something we call a boudin, which is French for sausage. And so you can see as you come around the side of this fold here, the limb was stretching. And instead of uniformly stretching, it kind of um, separate into these, these um, little kind of elongate bodies. They look like uh, 
sausages in cross section, but they're uh, linear, so they would be defined as a lineation. And above we see maybe kind of the end on slice through a couple of these boudins that probably was once a more continuous stone. And the way they deformed was to kind of pull apart like taffy. They, once they started stretching, they flowed quite quickly and you had the two big chunks separated by this, this gap into which this other material sort of flowed. Uh, here's some more boudin, boudinage or boudon. So you see this one layer here is kind of stretched and pulled apart, whereas the surrounding layers were able to be a little bit more fluid and, and uh, deform more in a uniform manner. Some more boudons here on the right, same thing, and you really see how it looks like sausage is being stretched out. So the lineation, especially in the right case, would be in and out of the view here. So it's like the end on look at our, our lineation. So why do we care? So we can use this, these fabrics to tell us about sense of shear and how the rocks form. So sometimes we call these tectonites and they let us relate small scale deformation to the large scale context. So the example kind of as a joke, here's um, this person making pancakes. And so, you know, if you pour the pancake on the main skillet here where it's just nice and flat, we get this sort of predominantly flattening behavior for the pancake. Whereas on the side here, where they start to sort of stretch down to off the edge of the uh, skill, the griddle, uh, they get more sort of stretched out. Um, and so that would be predominantly sort of constriction and formation of, of kind of lineation. So the formal names we give to these would be like an S tectonite, so just a metamorphic rock name or a that has special geologic structural geology significance and it indicates predominantly flat and flattening and has a single foliation so that's like the sort of more usual pancake the l tectonite then is uh something that's dominated more by a single lineation looks like the stack of pencils has all been stretched out and mostly just squished and stretched and that's kind of like what we would see in, but vertically oriented in these uh, sort of more unusual uh, pancakes. And then the combination, the mixed behavior would be LS tectonite, where you have lineation that's contained in the foliation. So what this tells us, we can have plain strain where all the deformations in the S1-3 plane, so simple flattening, uh, and that's kind of shown above there. Constriction will be where we're, we're really, maybe the uh, most deformation is kind of constricting in two directions, but then we have a lot of extension in the third direction. And then plane strain is just sort of the more uniform. This plane strain means we preserve the volume. And that's what's shown in the, the right case here. So point is we can use these technites to try to help us uh, interpret this kind of behavior in the rock and each one of these tectonites could just be like one of these little uh, circles that turned into an ellipse and so here we would expect to see a lot of uh, foliation develop and unless we got a lot of uh, stretching so the formation of lineation is really a special condition and if we're shearing uh, we have the sense of shear like top to the right and that's really important. We need to usually find the special plane, the sense of shear plane. It's uh, perpendicular to the foliation, uh, and then it contains the lineation. So it'd be like a, this face of this uh, prism here is that sense of shear plane. It's the face that you look at to get a sense of what, uh, where, how things are shearing. So if you remember from our trip to the South Mountain, here we're looking at the sense of shear plane we see the foliation here divided by these sea surfaces. There's a second, maybe weak foliation, the S's. And then if we looked up on top, if you remember, uh, we saw the lineation. So we know that this is top to the left, or in the case of the South Mountains, it's top to the east. So we pulled the South Mountains up from underneath uh, Red Mountain. Here's another example where we see the sense of shear developed in this rock, and it's showing shearing developing these S surfaces, but we're also kind of localizing things in the shear zone 
and variable kind of flow patterns across the shear zone. So again, we use the tectonites like the myelinites, like the with foliation lineations to help us interpret how the rock is deformed. 